What is going on guys? I'm back on the mic today from Ghost Hack and today I am a little bit sick. Sorry about that. My voice probably sounds a little weird. But regardless of my health today, I'm going to show you guys how I make my 808s. Now, even though a myriad of different plugins can be used to make 808s, I prefer to use Serum because I can utilize its effects section and then do post processing in FL Studio. So here is a few examples of some 808s that I've made using this technique. You can hear the really thick sounding 808s with some really rich harmonics because if you're a good producer that knows anything about music nowadays, you cannot stick with just being simple. You have to do, you know, something unique. This is especially true when it comes to very simplistic things such as 808s. You know, nobody's using just a straight up sine wave with a pitch drop anymore. It's all something interesting. All right, so what we're going to start out with here is just a blank serum. There's nothing in this, just a saw wave. And I'm gonna put down one note at F4. I make I like do using bass in F because F sounds really good when you have it at the right octave for sub bass. So I just have an F note extending for four bars, which is a nice length for an 808. Alright, now let's start completely from scratch. First off, let's change the wavetable to a analog BD sign. Now a lot of producers use this wavetable as sub bass because you can see there's extra harmonics as opposed to just a sine wave. You can see the extra harmonics up there, and especially when you scroll through the wavetable, they kind of shift around a bit. It gets you a lot more of a natural sound than just a straight up single harmonic sine wave. So let's bump this down a couple octaves. Ah, and there we hear the bass. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into here. I'm going to pull up this drop down menu, go multis and squareify. I want the clean sound of a square wave just with those harmonics. So all you have to do is squareify it and then normalize each gain separately. And now we're back to what we have and now you can listen to the difference. If you can't hear that, then I'd suggest either plugging into better speakers or get a subwoofer. Or you could just use headphones, which is probably a lot less expensive. Next up, let's just create the shape of an 808. So we're gonna throw this on envelope, which means it's gonna go through this pattern and then it's gonna stop completely after this pattern. So what we'll do is we'll create a general shape like this. I think what'll be better is if I do one of these. And now what we're gonna add this to is gonna be the course pitch. So let's drag it up onto right here and you can see what it's done. Now obviously this is happening super fast, so let's slow it down. Even slower. Yeah, there you can kind of hear the pitch fall. However, it's going a lot lower than we want it to and that's because this is going both directions. The 50% line is in the middle and at the bottom half of this, it's going down into the lower octaves and on the top half is only when it's staying up. We only want it going one way. We want this to be the bottom pitch and all the way upward. So if you hold shift, alt, and click, you have now made it unipolar instead of bipolar. And you can hear it a lot better. Now you can hear that it's way too slow. Let's turn up to two bars. That seems like a good speed. All right, let's turn this up here. Ah, that sounds good. Next up, let's just fine tune this a little bit more. I'm gonna be doing this throughout the video because you really don't have the final result until the end. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this up more so it covers the more, more frequencies in the high end. There we go. However, now this part where it's moving around up top is too fast, so let's move it a little bit. Maybe let's add another dot. Man, my eyes are watering. That's what happens when you listen to bass when you're sick. I noticed the transient is a little inconsistent, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the random phase all the way down. So we'll start right here each time, and let's just mess around with the phase to try to find a good position. That sounds pretty good. Let's just tighten it up a bit. That sounds nice. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to modulate this wavetable position with this LFO right here. Just to change up the tone of the hit. It just adds a little bit more shape. Alright, that is our basic 808. Next up, we're going to throw a couple effects on this. First off, I'm going to throw on some distortion. Now, a lot of producers just take a tube and then crank it to about maybe here. 
and that does sound nice it does have some good harmonics but i'd rather use a little bit of asymmetrical and what that's going to do is that's going to generate some even harmonics as well as odd harmonics that the tube does so overall it's less on the very high end and it just makes the bottom end richer obviously that is a little too much I like turning it to about there, but we're also going to modulate this. We're going to turn it down a little bit because I don't want as much distortion on the initial transient. Also, maybe a little more speed with this. Right, I just made some final adjustments there with the distortion because I could hear it a little better. Next up, we're going to throw on some compression, but not just normal compression. We're going to throw on multiband, and you may be thinking that this is going to sound really weird, and trust me, it is. That's a weird 808. You don't really like all those high harmonics, but what I want to do with the multiband here is bring out all the harmonics and then we can take away whatever harmonics we don't want with an EQ. So right now I'm just going to fine tune this. Right, that's a really powerful 808. I think before the compressor, I actually am going to add a phaser, turn the rate, the depth, and the frequency all the way down, and then I can just uh, work with the mix here because you can hear what it does. It just adds a really nice harmonic effect that is almost impossible to achieve with anything else, really. What I am going to do is turn the mix all the way down and go with envelope one. All the way up in the mix so what this does is as soon as i release the note the phaser goes off because when you do this with the phaser a, a sub kind of hangs around after you lift up the note so this is going to just cancel all of that out so now we have an 808 that it's very messy it's time to eq this so what we're going to do is flip on the eq and we're going to turn on a low pass even though that cleans it up a good bit, we no longer have the transient of the 808. So we're just going to do a little modulation with LFO1 here. Tell you what, for this modulation, it's a little bit sharp. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to remove. And then what I'm going to do here is something kind of special. If I hold Alt, click, and drag this into LFO2, I now have the exact same modulation with everything at exactly the same. So I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to drop this right here. And this is going to be the attack of the kick for the low pass. All right, so after tweaking the filter and the distortion and the phase and, you know, other stuff like that, I've come up with this. Now, I think that is about as good as I can get it with Serum. Let's it's time to throw it into the mixer for some post-processing. Right, first off, we do need an EQ because there's still some high end that sounds, you know, not too good. Pretty much all through this process, it's purely by preference, like what you think sounds best in an 808. So I'm just shaping this curve to what I feel is good to have. To that, I think I'm going to throw a Maximus on here and separate out these bands. That's where it's going to sound really thick. This is what I want to edit here. Don't want a lot of this at all. Ah. That's what I like to hear. A little bit of clickage at the beginning, and then the high end silences out. I'm gonna turn this low mid high delay down. So there's as little delay as possible. And then I'm also going to turn it completely mono. After this, I do want to EQ the high end a little bit more. Now let me just go back to Serum and do some fine edits. All right, I got it sounding pretty good, but next up we have to do some automation. So let's turn off this little loop here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And now we're gonna automate some stuff. First of all is volume. 
I want to automate to do something like this. Maybe a little bit of, actually, I'm going to change this to a half sign. That's a nice looking, nice looking curve. Yeah, that just fades out over time. That sounds nice. And next up, we're also going to automate the mix of the compressor. So all you have to do is click this button right here, move this around, and then you have the controller. Let's create the automation clip. The compressor dry wet is going to be all the way up and then go down kind of like that. We're going to do the same thing with the mix of the distortion. So let's turn that down, modulate that, create automation clip. Done. All right, at the very end of this effect chain, I'm just going to throw on the sound goodizer. Makes everything sound better. If you want to do some EQing after that, that's perfectly fine. You can just throw on one and do whatever you like. All right, there you have it. Now that's my 808. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a sample. So I'm going to go into a limiter. Here we go. I'm going to turn the attack all the way down. Just make sure this is at normal volume. Maybe leave a little bit of attack. Yeah, I just want to keep that at zero dB. Now that that's on there, let's open up an Edison and we are just going to record this out. Let's turn off the pen, go on input and... All right, we got it. Now let's just trim out the excess. Let's go like this. And after we have done that, we can now go in and do some editing to the volume with this handy dandy little tool right here. What I want to do is I want to turn this all the way down. And I think I just want to... Now we can go back to the main one. All you have to do to render this is just hit the normalize. And there we go. Now we have a nice smooth fade out curve to go with our 808. Now all you have to do is file, save sample as, and you can save it wherever or however you want. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I do wanna say that if you were trying to do exactly what I did to recreate the same 808, that probably is not going to work out very well because a lot of what I was doing was very intricate and it would be very, very hard to recreate exactly the one that I got. So what I suggest is just use these techniques and just make a unique one for yourself that way. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more future tutorials and I will see you all in the next video. Happy producing.